Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's interview. I love to interview really strong, creative entrepreneurs on what their journey looks like really from the inside of entrepreneurship. And today I'm talking to Susie Ippolito, who is a brand strategist. We got into a conversation about value because both of us like to work with people who are trying to create value in the world, but they struggle with their brand identity, who they are as business owners, how to price themselves. And so she and I kind of got into this conversation about value and she's got some opinions on it that I really want you here today to here today. So Susie, thank you for giving us your time today. Super, super appreciative of it. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm very grateful to be here. Will you just introduce yourself to us and tell us who you are and who you help in the world? Sure. I'm Susie Polito. I'm a brand strategist with Susie Polito Brands, and I put brands to develop themselves into businesses that are successful and sustainable. I my My clients run the gamut from food and beverage service, to catering, to um, hairstylists, makeup artists, attorneys, financial people, commercial real estate, just it runs the gamut. That's a huge target market. That's amazing. Um, so what is something that you see people struggle with, given that you work with people who run the gamut? What do they struggle with in terms of value? What does that mean to them? People have um, a misconception of value. And it's a funny thing because I always say a lot of people will um, be sure to tell you where you can get the best deal on milk, but they don't really understand what constitutes the price of milk. So we don't really always really understand a value. So even people who are always pursuing the best deal on things, which I'm definitely one of them, um, you might not really understand what makes something valuable. So what does make something valuable? What ultimately makes something valuable is if it resonates with the person who's purchasing it, right? Mm -hmm. So we want to evoke some sort of an emotion. We want to evoke some sort of a need. We want to evoke some sort of brand awareness and recognition of themselves within your brand so that they see your, your service, uh, product or service as, as something that will add something to their lives. Value is defined by the problem that it solves. So we all have these great ideas for businesses, but unless you can articulate in concrete terms the problem that your product or service is solving, then you have a little bit more work to do before you're ready to really put it out in the world. So true. Can I tell you a story that I just heard yesterday from somebody mm -hmm. <clears throat> around this exact topic? She has gone, she kind of skipped over some fundamentals and doesn't really know who her target market is, can't answer that question of uh, what value is it, what problem does it solve in the world, does the world need and want this thing? And so she invested a lot of money into um, a lawyer and a, um, a graphic designer and a web designer, and then she actually had her product built and created. But she still is not sure what to charge for it because she doesn't know if, it actually solves a problem. And so she was really struggling. And I was, oh, I was so heartbroken after our call because I was like, she did so much hard work and spent so much money, time, and effort, yet she really doesn't know if her product is valuable. Well, that's why it's important to start with that question. What problem am I solving? Mm -hmm. And then if you're not able to answer that immediately, don't rush to the logo. Don't rush to the website. <laughs> Because you're going to do it over again. It's Amen. Yeah, you're going you're gonna to waste the money. I mean, if you want to explore it and see where it goes and, you know, play with a platform on your own time to see how it kind of works out, that's one thing. But to commit to a narrative that you, you haven't even outlined yet is counterproductive. I agree. I don't think people understand that because first of all, it's not the fun part of building a business. It's kind of the really boring, crappy part. You think it's fun. I think it's fun too. But I think that when, when like people come to us and I tell them, okay, we're going to have to do some client discovery. We're going to have to do some target market interviews. We're going to have to like really pull this apart. It terrifies them. I think it terrifies them because they're worried that they're not going to get their idea validated, that there's this fear that, oh, maybe I've had this idea, but it's not really going to be, the world won't want it. But it's also boring. My, my people are creative. They're, they're, they want to do like the fun stuff, like, like what you're talking about, go straight to the logo, go straight to the website. 
but th there's not, that's not the, that's not the path to success. <laughs> and the way that you get around those things, what the piece that they're missing is actually not, well, the business knowledge and probably s some financial confidence and things that they really need to put into place in their business in order to see it grow. But it's also a mindset piece that is missing. And the first thing that you need to adopt is faith. Mm -hmm. And you have to have faith, even you don't, even if you don't know what it is, you've created this and it, you just somehow know inside of you that it has, it's going to have value to the larger world. It's going to help someone in some way. It's going to solve a problem. If you know those things, then you have faith and you trust the process and you kind of really just follow the practices of mindful awareness and you center yourself in gratitude for the experience. And anyone who's gone through uh, any kind of mindful awareness journey will tell you it is the, the dark parts of that journey that will give you the most value. And it really is, you know, it's the process of brand development, brand development in itself. So not, not, um, not putting any of the business aspects in place at this moment, but just brand development itself is very similar to the process of academic writing. Mm. So you make a claim, you find some evidence, you back it up, you write it up, and you, present, and, you, and you connect that claim to the larger world so that it has resonance and significance, yes. and then you, you write it up, conclusion, and there you go. The <laughs> process is largely the same because you have to make yeah. it, find some evidence that backs it up. And if you're stuck at that point, if you say, I've created this great thing, but I don't know what to say or do about it, that indicates that either you have more research to do or you have more to experience before you're ready to articulate the value of your product or service. Yeah, I, I was an English teacher. I don't know if I ever told you this. I was an English teacher for about 14 or 15 years. <clears throat> and what I got, I wish I had like a rubber stamp because all I would ever write on the paper is, how does this prove your thesis? You need more support. <laughs> you need to explain. How does this prove your thesis? And so you, it's, it's such a great analogy that I literally never thought of. But like if your thesis is the world needs this, you need to prove that thesis over and over and over again. I love that analogy. Yeah, and we get so frustrated because it seems like um, it, this is so easy for everybody else. It seems like my brand was born yesterday and it came out the box this way. This <laughs> three years of hard work, mm -hmm. research, climbing up, wait, that's not right, got to go this way, wait, that's not right, okay, now this is what fits. But um, still holding true to the core values that I established at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And it's so interesting. If I go back to my original notes, which I come across every now and then, mm -hmm. a lot of the same language is there that is still present with me now. And that's how you know when you have a really solid idea. Yeah. Not that the ideas won't iterate and evolve over time, but the core of what you're intending to do should be right there at the beginning. Right. Can you tell us a little bit about your personal journey as you left industry and moved into entrepreneurship? Oh, sure. I, it was um, not pretty or pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I want to meet the woman whose, whose journey is pretty and pleasant. I haven't met her yet. <laughs> I know. Um, it's, um, gosh, it's been such a journey. So I, I started out as a makeup artist in New York City, and I was independent in that. I was freelance. So I'd be freelance in the stores for, the, uh, for some brands, and then I would also be freelance working on set uh, as a makeup artist. So I was still really managing my own, um, my time and managing my own business and managing my own expenses and things. Mm. So, but then to really go out on my own and say, I'm going to put my full-time efforts towards generating business, towards um, everything else, doing the books, creating the advertising, everything else that it takes. That was, um, it was, it was two things. It was one, um, my fiance is, thank goodness, very, very smart at business and gave me a great education over time in what to do and what not to do. And it was interesting because he put it, and business language is very much male narrative. Yes. And this is something that we also struggle with a lot. So he would say things like, don't get emotional. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what? what does that mean? Sorry, those words don't register here. I totally feel the same way. But the truth of the matter is that when you are centered in your faith, in, in that you have a quality product or service, mm -hmm. when you have the confidence and the knowledge to be able to articulate its value to the larger world, and you ground yourself in gratitude, and you, you work in those mindful practices, 
we're more able to absorb those kinds of thoughts that are so um, outside of our normal thinking. Yes. And that's really what it took for me to go from a, a more structured corporate job mm -hmm. to, um, to be able to do this on my own. It was the hard business le lessons that you really need to learn and developing a strong mindful awareness practice, practice along the way. One of the things I try to teach my clients is you don't learn those hard business lessons by reading about them or taking another course or getting another certification. You learn them by doing and trying and failing and iterating and licking your wounds. And being that uncomfortable. uncomfortable. Learn it by being uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. You have to be uncomfortable in it. It's, going, it's not going to feel natural to you. This is something you haven't done before. You right. can think of it just like if you're going to go with a new workout routine. Mm -hmm. Say you want to train for a half marathon and all of a sudden today you wake up and you run three miles, you're going to be uncomfortable. <laughs> and then tomorrow you'll run three and you'll be less uncomfortable. <laughs> and then next week you'll run six and you'll be uncomfortable again. That's right. That's why pain is growth and growth is uncomfortable. So, and anytime we have to reach that space, we have to go in a little deeper, ground down a little firmer, find a little more faith and push forward. So you meet people where they are and they could be at any part of their journey when they're starting their brand. And you really understand, you've, you've told us, you've understand what it, what it, what it takes to make the leap, to, to have the faith, to have the gratitude, to learn the lessons. So you really like walk the walk. When you get a client, what are some of the issues that your clients present with that you really are specially help, specially equipped to help them with? Not being able to articulate their value, uh -huh. not being able to articulate uh, exactly what their product or service does. Most people don't really know that they have something super valuable to add to the world. So people will come to me and say, well, I kind of have this idea and this is kind of what I would think about it. And then we'll talk about it and take it through a couple of workshops. And I think 100% of the time I get the feedback that I, I had no idea what a powerful idea this really was until we worked together. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing. Um, confidence is another thing we work a lot on. Um, it's, it's, it's funny because sometimes people are like, oh, so you're a business coach. Oh. No. <laughs> but it does, it does work into the narrative a little bit. Totally. As we talk more and more in concrete terms and really take, take the emotion out of it because a product is – a product. It is, it is an inanimate object one way or the other. So it doesn't necessarily, the, the product itself does not involve emotion. Mm -hmm. So if you look at it objectively and speak about it in concrete terms, you're going to say, you're going to realize that you have things to build on here, if that makes sense. So your zone of genius is really helping your clients get non-emotionable, <laughs> non-emotionable, non-emotional. There you go. <laughs> oh my God. Non-emotionable. What is wrong with me? Non-emotional about the thing that they are very emotional about. Yeah, giving them the chance to zoom out and take them through um, a strategic, structured, guided conversation. Yes. And a lot of times, you know, I'll say things and do things that make people not like me. I get and it. That's okay. Again, you have to be um, you have to be uncomfortable if you want to grow. Totally so. get it. Yeah, that's great. Do you find that this work <clears throat> of the non emotional part and being able to build on the structure that's that they show up with uh, is it different for women versus men? That's really interesting. Um, yes and no. Um, I think that the men that I've worked at with have taken it more of a, t a task orientated kind of project. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, the women, I definitely get a lot more description from, mm -hmm. um, everyone tends to get like pretty passionate and emotional about things. Um, the biggest problem that I see in both, uh, in anybody who comes is, um, speaking about your brand in the I narrative. So if I say to you, well, what are your brand goals? And you respond, well, I want to make money. Well, that's wonderful. But what is your, what does your brand want to do? Or I want to be known as this. That's also wonderful. But what does your brand want to do? And your brand why, we talk about like, what's your why, right? Your brand why is not the same thing as your personal why. Mm -hmm. These things are not aligned. And the first indication is that um, your brand why should not have the words me or I in it. Mm -hmm. 
they should, you should learn to speak about your brand in the third person and say, Jen Liddy Coaching does this, and Jen Liddy Coaching has these goals, and Jen Liddy is going to be known for this, um, as opposed to what the goals that you set aside for yourself in your personal life. Can you give us an example of that with your own brand? Sure. Susie Polito wants to lose 10 pounds. <laughs> Susie Polito Brands does not. No. <laughs> 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 but that, I mean, but it, uh, um, my, my personal why, what I, what the vision that I have for myself that I will know when I have made it is the moment I walk into Chanel and buy a bag about this big for myself <laughs> with the money that I earned by myself. Mm -hmm. And just that's, and it's not like that's a, it's just a goal. It's just that thing that pulls me forward. It's just that I want to reach that level where I have made money for myself that I can afford this item. Yes. That's my personal why. Gotcha. My, my business why is because I, I genuinely believe that people need help in developing their businesses. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot, there's a lot more, or it's more popular to think that you want to develop your branding as far as your logo and your design and your colors and things like that. And logo and design are hugely important, but if you don't have the business knowledge around it, it's likely not going to succeed. So having, uh, so my, my business why is to communicate that to the world. Gotcha. Thank you. So I have a question on this topic that I hear a lot from my clients. I wonder if you hear it from your clients on the difference between value, worth, and pricing. I feel like they get lumped together and people use them interchangeably. And I feel like you might have an opinion on that. Oh yeah, I definitely do. They, they are not <laughs> the same thing. And yes, people do. I use them interchangeably uh, all the time and, and far too often. So value is uh, sort of subjective, right? So if a, a, a Honda Pilot salesperson is going to sell a car based on its safety, its size, and its affordability, mm -hmm. because that's what's going to resonate with the person, that's what's going to create value for the person who's purchasing it. A Ferrari salesperson is going to appeal to the ego and speed and money and luxury because that's what's going to resonate and create value for the person who's that, purchasing it. Sure. Worth is also kind of subjective. If you think about if you're stranded on I-90 and you have no car charger and you run into the nearest um, road stop to get one and it costs $20, it is worth it to you to get it if you're on the road and your phone is dead. That's right. Whereas in your everyday life, if yours just breaks or you lose it, you'd probably wait until you can, or it's more worth $10 as opposed to $20. And then as far as pricing goes, and this is where it gets real sticky, people tend to say, well, I deserve to be paid this, mm. or, I, or I deserve to earn this, or I need this amount to pay my bills. But that doesn't create value for the people who are buying buying your product or service. So you need to think more about your cost structure. Okay. You need to think more about the market that you're in. Mm -hmm. And you need to think uh, more about the kind of value that you're creating. Where are you creating those, that connection for your clients? Mm -hmm. And the important thing is to be able to articulate your value. Because once you can articulate your value, you can create a proposal that is going to show that value. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking at creating a proposal and you're looking at the price at the bottom and you're going, I really don't want to give this away for $100. I know my service is worth $200. It's not a matter of just changing that number one to a number two. It's a matter of re-looking at that proposal and saying, where can I articulate more value in this proposal so that my client understands what I'm going to deliver? Mm -hmm. gotcha. And how valuable it is. That's super helpful. I find that the longer people are in business, what, what they struggle with at the very beginning of the business, because that's often where I meet my clients, um, they, they back into pricing by what you're talking about. Like, this is what I think it's worth, or this is what other people are charging, but they don't really have like a body of experience or, or they don't have a body of like resources uh, maybe they don't have the confidence. So at the very beginning, sometimes they will undercharge. I know I, I definitely undercharged at the beginning, but I needed to do that because I needed to build up my expertise. And like, I have so many resources. I'll challenge what you just said. Okay. I charged less at the beginning, but I needed to do that because I needed to build up my expertise. Yeah. Let's reframe that to being, I charged less in the beginning 
because I had not yet built up my expertise. <laughs> That's, that's very true, yes. Your passion was there, mm -hmm. your focus was there, but you were not yet, avail you're not yet able to add, add, that, the value. add the value to get the price that you needed. So it's not a mm -hmm. but, it's an and. I like that, I hadn't thought about that yet. I use that, I use that tool a lot, but I hadn't applied it to this conversation with myself that I have. And that's really helpful, and it's more like empowering to say it this way. Yeah, it you know? is. Because we get, we get caught in a lot of, I hate to use the word excuses, because it's not really, I mean, because we're not doing it intentionally. It's not like, you know, my pile of laundry, <laughs> <laughs> very intentionally ignoring. It's not that. It's, but it is, we do um, kind of put up these walls to protect ourselves from the kind of success that's waiting for us. Oh, and if, I love that. That's so beautifully put the success that's waiting for us yeah and we when we say things like i when, when you frame it in the way that you had originally framed it when you say things like i charge less because i still needed to do this it, it's really i charge less because i wasn't able to give the value that generates more and it's so true and i have actually my coach has helped me understand that as i grow and, and all of the things that you get and gain and create as you grow in your business, they make you more valuable. And then the, there's the confidence that goes along with that, like the resources that go along with that, the content, like all of it kind of works together. And I do think we judge ourselves pretty harshly at the beginning. That's a big one. If you can release judgment from yourself, this mm -hmm. process will be so much easier. Mm. And the beauty of that is when you release judgment from yourself, you release judgment from everybody else. Mm -hmm. And that just makes the world a better place, right? Yes. But um, if you are able to release judgment from yourself in this entrepreneurial journey, it will be so much more pleasant for you because it's a no hard journey than you nobody knows it more than you nobody's you know anything that looks it's it's all appearances you know so it's not <laughs> it's it, nobody has it that easy we all know that. I know I know and no matter what what space you get to in your business how much value you create in the world a lot of us stay small because of the self-judgment because we're always looking at the person who's ahead of us and saying but I'm not Marie Forleo but I'm not Amy Porterfield you know whoever it is and right, you're not. no, and I <laughs> am. And that's why you're here, and they're here, and I'm here, and she's here, and everybody. Because there's enough. There's enough people to serve. You know. Yeah, exactly. I know. Exactly. This is so enlightening and empowering. Thank you. So I have one last question for you. What resources, given your expertise and your experience, and the breadth of people that you've worked with, can you offer for somebody who is leveling up? or coming in, you know, like wh what can people, you've given us a lot of tools already, you know, you're, you're talking about um, le releasing self-judgment and, and a practice of gratitude and like kind of giving yourself grace. Are there any other resources that you can recommend for people? Um, in the beginning stages, if you're real, I would say get into everything so at least you know what you're doing. So Canva is a fantastic app, mm -hmm. even if you're not a digital designer, you can still get into it. So at least you know what it entails and you know what you're paying for when you have to pay for it. Mm. Uh, and, and don't, don't be afraid of, of doing that. And, and everyone started it at some point. So, it, and it's just a drag and drop situation. So just get into it and try it. Uh, that's a phenomenal tool that I think gives people a lot of confidence as well in being able to put their brand message out there. Um, any other tools? Let's see. Yeah. Uh, the first thing that I would say is go out and volunteer your time and talent with a nonprofit. Mm. There's loads of them everywhere. There's no <laughs> shortage of them anywhere, especially in central New York. Yeah. A lot of passionate people around here. But what happens when you volunteer your time and talent, you very quickly see how valuable it is. And you get confidence around using your voice and inserting yourself in the conversation. So that's the first thing that you can do to really, if you're really not true of where your value lies, that's a great place to find it. I literally never thought of that. It's a brilliant suggestion. Well, I didn't have any other choice. I moved here not knowing anybody. So, mm -hmm. and I, I called my aunts and I said, what do I do? And they said, volunteer. So I was like, okay. <laughs> that's so great. I know. And that, but that is how you get into the community and get to know people and 
it was just a great payoff that I also learned my value in the meantime. So, okay. <clears throat> so the second tool I would suggest is detachment. Detachment is the key to success. And that doesn't mean that you detach from the fact that this product or service generated from your heart and soul, mm. but it means that you detach from the outcomes. So when you send out a proposal or you reach out to a contact and they don't get back to you or it wasn't the outcome that you wanted, keep going. And even if you got a direct no, celebrate that. <laughs> celebrate the fact that you sent out a proposal. Celebrate the fact that you made a connection. Celebrate your failures. Celebrate your successes. And you will eventually find yourself just coasting through it. You're going to send out proposals and somehow you just forget about them until it comes back again. Right. And that just makes the whole stream of energy flow a lot more so freely. Much more ease. Ease. I have clients who will be like, well, I put it out once on Facebook and nobody took me up on it. I'm like, are you kidding? Like, there's so much noise out there. You have to, you know, put it out and put it out and not be det attached to, I love, oh, amen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can't be attached to that outcome. You're in the, you are, you said it well, you're in the middle of a lot of noise. Yes. The, the, the object is not to make yourself louder. It's to make yourself yes. more noticeable. And you do yes. that with quality, not, well, quantity too, because you do have to be pretty, you do have to be active, yes. You have to be present and active. I always say it's like social media, the basic parts of social media are like showing up to a party. Or if you're going to sit in the corner and not talk to anybody, you're going to leave not having a good experience. But if you put yourself out in the crowd and you socialize, you're going to leave having a better experience. It is and called social media. It is. It is. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah. Anything else about... Um, advice for people? Um, so there was attachment. One thing I hear a lot is, well, I feel bad. I don't want to charge more. So-and-so is going through this, or my client said that. Well, feeling bad does not pay your bills. And that sounds like a cold thing to say and something hard to get used to. But if you're truly creating value for people and you're marketing it to the right people, mm -hmm. you're going to make those connections for yourself. Mm -hmm. And if you think of it if you get in the mindset of creating value for your brand first and your customer second, mm. that's going to be an easier flow for you. Love you that. Cosmetic gifts with purchases, right? They are not there for you. They're there for positive brand awareness, positive brand feelings and things like that, but they are structured to benefit the brand first and the customer second. Never thought about that. Great. Yep. Yeah. Every sale, every discount that you get, every discount that you see is structured that way because it's ultimately geared to, to benefit the brand in some way. So you have to create value for yourself first and your customer second. I love that. I realized I just created a summer uh, accelerator for, and I only have eight spots available because my brand, like this summer, I want to breathe this summer. I don't want to do the thing I do every single summer, which is like, max myself out. So I'm only taking eight people. And I literally had this thought, Susie, it's so funny. I didn't have the language that you just gave me, but I had the thought I'm doing this so that Gen Liddy coaching and development can see the difference between an accountability accelerator and true deep business development coaching. They're very different. Yeah. And I wanted to be able to differentiate that for my brand. And then of course for myself, and also it will serve the people who kind of want to stay going during the summer and not, you know, like flail and have the fall smack them in the face. But I didn't have that language that you just gave me. So thank you so much. You're Super welcome. helpful. Yeah. You're welcome. And the last thing you had said was to spend time with people who are doing better than you. Yeah. The, the, one of the best tips that I can advise, and this takes a little bit of courage, but really go out and find people who are doing better than you. Mm -hmm. Find people, and it doesn't even have to necessarily be in your industry, but find people who are more active in uh, the philanthropy world or who are out there. If you want public speaking, hang out with people who are doing public speaking engagements, whatever their topic is. Find out what they're doing and how they're getting it there. And by hanging out with people who are doing better than you, you tend to adopt their their mindsets and their habits, and you really see the next stage in action. Mm -hmm. And so that makes it much easier to internalize and then to exhibit those behaviors yourself. It's almost like it normalizes it for you. It does, yeah. It makes it, it, you know, a lot of it, and especially for women, I think, has to do with permissions and giving ourselves permission to do these things. And when we see other women doing things in different spaces, 
uh, it, it kind of gives us permission to take that on as well. So a lot of that has to do with it too. Well, that's literally exactly the reason that I like to do these interviews. And I want people to see that they're, no matter where you are, whether you're pivoting or leveling up or just starting, like I want people to see that there are people out there taking risks and that and people who are, who are successful are willing to give advice and like they're not scary. So thank you for being that today for people. I'm sure that this is really not only informative, but also empowering and motivating. So thank you so much. Oh, you're oh. very welcome. That's what, I, that's what I aspire to be. How can I have people follow you? Like, wh where can people find you? Oh, sure. So my website is the best uh, resource always, suzyapolito.com. Okay. Uh, Facebook is writer Susie Apolito. Twitter is Susie Apolito. Instagram is Susie Apolito. <laughs> oh, that's super easy. Yeah. <laughs> so. Susie, thank you so much for your time today. This was, uh, like, I learned a whole bunch, and it was fun oh, to connect so with you again. And I will see you soon in person, I hope. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you.